from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello and welcome to another Ropecast. And today, I am pleased to say that Carrie is back in the studio to continue talking about uh, pronunciation of English. We want to narrow it down a little bit today because many of our listeners are Germans. Mm -hmm. They're either Germans learning English or Germans teaching English. So let's see if you can use linguistics to offer a few tips, especially to those who are teaching English. What should they concentrate on in the classroom to get pronunciation at an acceptable level? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> we did mention the so-called th yeah. in a former podcast. Yeah. And a lot of people seem to concentrate on that. Yeah, I think because it, it appears to be very prominent, right? Mm. That's like obviously one of the new sounds that you have in English. But a lot of the research shows that it's it's not very important. That mm. um, if you do a substitution like a fa va or a za or even a ta da, it's it's not that bad. It people will be able to comprehend you. So instead of saying, I think you have, I think or I think. Yeah, or uh, I think. <laughs> or I think, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I yeah. can imagine some London speakers saying, I think. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. And I think in Ireland they say, I think. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not that's not a very problematic sound. And when I'm talking to students and their TH is maybe, you know, more like a stop or more like a different kind of sound, that's not really a problem. Um, what has been a problem, though, is sometimes, and this is very Zalendian, is when they do the so-called Anlautverhärtung when they mess up the consonant voicing at the beginning of words. You must make clear voicing means that when you hold your... When you hold your larynx. You, know, you can feel something happening yeah. that's voiced. Yeah. And if it's not, then you don't feel anything. Exactly. Yeah? And, and listeners at home, you can put your, your finger on your on your larynx or the top of your head. And if you uh, say, mm, you'll feel the vibration. That's the idea of voicing. And if you make a sound that doesn't have any voicing, like the sound or the hiss that a snake would make, you'll feel no vibration. That's a voiceless sound. Right. Yeah. yeah. And um, I noticed when I moved to the Saarland that when people talk about the color of the sky, yes. right, in high German, it would be blau, yes. right? And I've noticed that the Saarlanders say plau. Right. They have that voiceless p sound right. at the beginning of it. And sometimes they bring this into English, right. uh, which can be really problematic. And I think I told you the story about one of my students, he wanted to give a presentation about, well, rec recreational drug use. Right? Yes. Um, and he told me he was going to talk about trucks. And I thought, well, that's interesting for a grown man to talk about <laughs> trucks. Uh, but it's fair enough. Thinking I, about toys. Toys, yeah. vehicles, yeah. that kind of thing, travel. And then he began to talk about heroin and cocaine. And I realized, ah, ha, 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 ha. He wanted to talk about drugs. Yeah. And these sounds are voiced in English. So if you say drugs, you'll feel the vibration yes. in your larynx for the whole uh, for the whole of that word. And this is something that a lot of my university students are surprised about because they didn't talk about that in school. Mm -hmm. And that has, I think, important implications for mm, people being able to understand you easily. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we've got the voice voiceless thing. Yeah. And uh, what about um, the end of words? Yes, that's another thing. So in Saarlandian German and also High German, you have what is called the Auslautverhärtung. Mm. And that means that uh, voiced consonants are devoiced at the end of words. So right. that, that vibration in your in your larynx goes away. So um, when Germans say, for example, Guten Tag, they don't say tag, <laughs> as I used to say uh, as an English speaker. They say guten tag. And it almost sounds like a k at yeah. the end of it, a yeah. voiceless sound. Yeah. And again, this is also something that you can't do in English, mm -hmm. because if you do that, you will end up with, with another word. Yes. Yeah. yeah. For example? For example, um, I think of dog. Oh, and yes. Doc, yeah. right? There's a slight vowel change there, too. Mm. Um, but sometimes when people want to talk about the, the canine animal, I sometimes get a little bit confused thinking that they're talking about some sort of, you know, promenade onto a lake or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Right. What about um, vowel sounds as such? Yeah, um, vowels are usually okay. The vowel that is probably most problematic is the a ah vowel, okay, the vowel yeah. that you get in cats, yes. right? This is notoriously uh, difficult for Germans to produce, and it's a very important vowel. 
Um, well, think of man, men. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Singular, exactly, plural, right? exactly, right? Um, yeah, this is very hard for Germans to produce, mm -hmm. and because um, there's no German sound that's close to that. No, there isn't. There isn't. Mm -hmm. And in linguistics, we we plot the vowels on a vowel chart, yeah. and there's this great big gaping hole <laughs> in the German vowel chart where the English a is. Yeah, we'll put this on the website so people yeah. can see. Oh, yeah, good, good. Yeah. The uh, visual is 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 good there. But the closest vowel the Germans have is the e. So right. that's a vowel that's in bet, yeah. for example. And a lot of times Germans will use that vowel as a replacement. So they'll say men and they mean man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or um, here in the Zealand, I hear words about the, the big apple. Oh, yes. And apple born. And uh, at first I found this very hard because for me, of course, as a native speaker of English, a and e are so different. Yes. I would never, yes. you know, never confuse them. Yeah. So that's a really important vowel that I think... Um, maybe teachers should focus on. I think sometimes vowel length is important too, yes. isn't it? I, for example, I've had students who still can't really perceive the difference between leaf, the thing that's on the tree, and yeah. leave, yeah. from the verb to leave. Yeah, yeah. And there, I think vowel length would be oh, critical. Certainly. Oh, certainly. For for some of my students who, who do have trouble with the, the voicing of consonants at the end, I get them to hold their larynx. And mm -hmm. when they say leaf, yeah. They feel there's nothing happening in the larynx. And then when they say leave, hopefully they do feel that vibration. And sometimes if they're having a lot of trouble with that, I'll tell them just if you lengthen the vowel, it will make that final sound sound yeah. a little bit more voice. Yeah. yeah. And that does carry a big weight in English, doesn't it? Really it really helps. It really yeah. helps. And it's the same thing with man and men. Yes. If you just lengthen that vowel, it sounds a little bit more singular. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank and you, Roger. We hope that we've helped teachers of English with yeah. your tips and uh, hope to welcome you back again one day. I'd love to. Thank you, Carrie. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.